Hello, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to be painting a warthog from Halo Ground Command for the UNSC. So here is the warthog, and here is one that I painted earlier. We're going to paint this one in a similar fashion. So he uses like a dark green uh, colour scheme, um, very similar to um, what you've seen in the game, and um, similar to the miniatures on the box, so we're going to keep to that scheme. So this miniature has been primed um, in a light grey as normal and then I have painted Avalon Black all over him. The reason I've done this is because there's a few sort of harder to reach areas and by painting them black you know um, they sort of look more like shadow. And there's a few black areas on the interior as well so it just makes it a lot easier um, when it comes to painting him. So we're going to begin by painting the green on on the body and I'm going to start with some Castellan Green. So again we're using this little range of paints for this miniature and Castellan Green is a base paint so it gives us quite a nice coverage over the Abaddon Black. However I do recommend at this stage to do a couple of thin coats and it's just a case of painting on all the areas where you want this green bodywork to be. Now at this stage it will look quite light but we will be darkening that up and it will look slightly darker as it dries also. So just work your way around the warthog and all the areas that you want to be this colour. With that layer now completely dry it's time to add some shade. So I'm going to use some Aphonian camo shade. I'm going to apply this just all over the castle and green areas, making sure the shade just gets into all these recesses and try and spread it around evenly so we don't pull up on any of the panels. So again just work your way around um, all these green areas. Okay, with the shade dry, it's now time to go on to the highlights. Before I begin, I just want to point out that I also painted the um, wet and shield and the hubcaps green as well, as I forgot to do them in the first step. So we're going to edge highlight the panels, and we're going to start off with some Lauren Forest. So when you do these edge highlights, it's very important that you thin your paint down. Uh, roughly two parts paint to one part water. If you don't thin the paint down at this stage, you can get some quite stark look in the highlights. So it's always a good idea to keep your paint thin. And if the highlights don't show up as much as you'd like, you can always add another coat. So we're just literally just following the panel lines and just paint them outside there. You see I put just a little too much on there but we can just move that move that around and because the paint's quite thin it'll dry quite subtle and that's what we want. We don't want sort of stark lines all over the miniature. We just want subtle subtle little highlights. I still got a little bit too much on the brush there. That's fine. And it's literally just a case of working around all these little panels and raised areas. Just painting highlights like that. And also you can follow these lines on the raised areas as well and when it comes to like the weapon shield you can literally just run the side of your brush just to, just along it like that so just work around your way around all these green areas and then we'll move on to the next step so that stage complete we now have some subtle highlights just on the green areas 
so now we're going to add a further highlight just to the corners and most sharper details for all these areas and we're going to take some Elysian Green so same as before I've thinned it out on my palette and this time we're only going to focus on the corners so if I take this wet shield for example I just want to do a little bit just at these corners a bit too much there but as you can see um, we only need a tiny little amount When it comes to the panels, you can literally just do just little bits, just at these corners like that. So just take your time and just work your way around on all these little little panels. Just as you did before, but this time just focusing on all the corners. So with the green areas now complete, we're going to focus our attentions to the black areas. So mainly the wheels and the inside of the interior. So we are going to start by taking some Eschen Grey. And we're going to dry brush this over these areas. So just dry brush all over the detail of the wheels. And you see I haven't really bothered painting the underside of the wheels as you're not going to see them. And we're just catching these raised areas with the Ashen Grey. And also the inside, um, I'm going to catch all the seats and all the details in there. Obviously at this stage it doesn't matter if you get any on the, on the driver inside. And also we're going to get this top bar and these side bits here. You can see that just brings out details on these pieces and they look a bit brighter than they are just because of the light shining on them. So we're going to stick with the ash and grey and we're going to highlight the window. So I'm going to keep the window black and I'm just going to edge highlight just running down here and um, with the ash and grey so just be as careful as you can um, and just run the ash and grey. Quite subtle, and um, I thinned it that down just as I did with the green highlights. A little bit too much on my brush there. So I'm essentially doing two lines, and one following this top line, and one following this other line here. And I'll do that on the other side also. Now another thing you can do as well is if you notice on the, um, the miniature on the card and the um, box art, so you have just a couple of little lines like that and like that, just to sort of um, represent a little reflection of light shining on the window. So yeah, next up I'll just paint them lines up there, and the black areas are essentially um, complete. So next up I'm going to focus on the crew themselves. Um, I'm painting these the same way I'm going to paint the um, regular troops as well, so there won't be a video on just painting UNSC troops, but they will be painted um, exactly the same way as, I, as I'm painting the guys here. So we're going to start off by um, painting them entirely with Zandri dust. So again, um, thin out slightly on your palette 
and apply a couple of thin coats for a nice smooth finish. And I'm just going to literally just paint the whole of each crewman in this colour and then we'll be picking out different details in the next step. And as you can see it just doesn't quite cover the black entirely so a couple of thin coats will give us a nice finish. So I've applied a couple of thin coats to both the um, marines. So next up is just to add a little bit more colour to their uniform. So I'm going to take some dryad bark. Now um, where you place this is entirely up to you or you can use their stack cards or a rule book for reference. And of course you can use any, any colours you want for the actual troopers themselves. I'm trying to keep them similar to um, how they appear on the box art. So essentially um, I'm going to apply this to the backpacks and then certain areas of their clothing as well. Now I'm not going to do this um, strictly 100% um, exactly the same as it might have been painted by Spartan Games but I'm using similar colours and because these are so small it doesn't make a massive difference um, which areas are painted what so I'm just going to do a little bit on the legs there and I'm also going to do these pouches on the side and I'll do a little bit just on the arms as well. So I'm going to paint them and then I'll be back. So as you can see I've painted a few random areas on him in the dryad bark. So next up to do on the crew is to take some Cadian flesh tone. And this is just for their faces and um, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of face um, visible so I'll try and do this on camera as well as I can. Uh, literally sort of um, the chin area uh, it might be hard to see where it is on the camera it's roughly sort of there maybe I'll try on the guy inside but we just want to hit just that little area just with a Cadian flesh tone they do have um, goggles on as well I believe and um, we'll be painting them when we do all the metal parts and then just on this guy as well. Um, sorry if you can't see it on camera. Come around here actually you can see just a bit of his face a little bit there. And if we can just get through the gap we can get the guy inside on it on this side also so that's all that is required for the skin so I'll give that about a minute to dry and then we'll move on to the next step. So with it with all these areas now dry um, I'm gonna add some shade to the entire of um, each each crew and I'm gonna take some Magwax F shade. So this will bring all the colours together and also uh, give us a nice shade in all the recesses and that will bring out all the details even better so literally just going to apply it all over both of them including the faces as well So work your way around both of these guys and then we can move on to the next step. With that shade wash applied you can see um, the details stand out a lot better on these miniatures. Now you can of course um, add some highlights if you wish but I'm not going to um, as these are only small little miniatures and I'm just trying to do a quick uh, easy way of painting these. Um, especially when it comes to um, the rank and file troops and there's a lot of them to paint so I just want to 
paint mine really quick and simple, but you could easily come back in with the base colours and add some highlights or use some lighter colours to really make yours stand out. Um, so I'm going to go straight on to the metal areas and this is the last step um, in this tutorial so we're going to start with some lead belcher. So the metal areas we are painting include all the gun, the gun mount and the base as well for gun and also just some bits um, underneath. So I'll start by painting just the gun and you just want to get a nice, nice smooth base coat just all over these areas. Shot there. So just work your way around all the metal areas. You may need two thin coats, but I think I'm only going to need for one as this is covering quite well. So yeah, work your way around the metal areas and then we can add some shade. So for metal areas now painted and for the um, lead belt is now dry we can be begin to add a shade. So the shade colour I'm using is Non Oil. So much like the previous shade we used on the crew, I'm just going to apply this all over all these metal areas and that will help bring out the detail. So just get a little bit more on the brush. on the front here. I'm just all in down here as well. Don't apply it too heavily because you don't want it to pull up and obscure details. But you do want it to get into all the little little areas. And once you've finished applying the shade, the Warthog will be complete. And with that, both my Warthog models are now complete. Now again, you could add further highlights to the metal if you wish. Um, I want to keep it quite dark on this one, but as you can see on this one, it's slightly lighter. You can just give it a highlight of um, Runefang steel if you wish. But yeah, ultimately, um, these Warthogs are now complete. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope it will help some of you when it comes to painting your Halo miniatures. Now um, usually I'll end these videos here but I just want to have a little sneak peek at what's coming up in the next painting video for you guys and that will be the Covenant Ghost. So I'm really happy with how these have turned out and I'm looking forward to making the video for the last one of these. And I'll also show you how I paint up the grunts as well. So yeah, I look forward to that. Hopefully I'll have that on the website next week. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you want to stay in touch with all the, uh, our upcoming videos, you can subscribe to our channel. So again, thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.